I've been using some well-composed Linux distributions lately, so I decided to try something more challenging. And Void Linux caught my eyes. There are two reasons I chose Void. The first one is the similarity it has with Solus. It is a built-from-scratch, stabilized rolling-release distribution with an in-house package manager. Given that I had so much fun last time with Solus, I decided to challenge myself with Void. The second reason is that it seems to me that the difficulty of setting up Void is in between a fully configured distribution like Ubuntu or Mint and distributions providing absolute freedom to its user like Arch and Gen2. So I want to see how hard would it be for me to set it up. And this is what happened. From the download page, I chose the XFCE live image. It boots into an XFCE desktop environment, but I didn't find any installation application there. So after consulting the handbook, I started the installation by typing void installer in the terminal, which launched an interactive terminal to install the whole system. After connecting to the internet, I started partitioning the disks. There's no automatic partitioning mechanism here. So to make things simpler, I took a picture of my old partitions, which was created automatically by Pop! OS and then replicated manually. This process is extremely simple. And the only change I made is that I chose ButterFS in the next step instead of ext4. The installation is super straightforward and fast after that. I felt like I was not composing a system like when I was installing Pure Arch or Gen2, but following a simple instruction set like when installing Ubuntu and Fedora. And I was surprised that I could finish the whole installation within an hour. Although I didn't time it myself, but I'm sure it is way less than an hour. I was pretty happy that I was able to log into XFCE right after this. After the installation, the first thing I did was to learn how to use XBPS. It is the system built-in package manager. It is different from other popular package managers as instead of having a command followed by a flag or an action like pacman-s or apt install and dnf install, XBPS has several separated commands. To install package, you need to use XBPS-install and xbps-remove is for removing packages. But all in all, it is quite self-explanatory to use, and I didn't find any difficulty learning it. I continue my journey by switching all the software mirrors to China and update the whole system. Then I turn on the non-free binary repository and install NVIDIA. NVIDIA was running properly right after the installation. These two steps are extremely easy what make me spend more time are the sound and Bluetooth issue. Another issue with Void is that as long as there is a service configured wrong, the whole system will not boot into any graphical interface. Neither the display manager nor XFCE will work. So if I installed or configure something wrong here, I had to boot into the TTY terminal and undo the things that broke the graphical interface, which also took additional time for me. There is no sound after the installation, so I installed the pipe wire following the handbook. Here it mentions that I need to make sure that POS audio service is disabled. So I checked the service folder following the link here. I didn't see anything called POS audio. But I was confused why the PACTL command returns POS audio. I didn't figure it out, so I just restarted the system. Sound is still not coming out. What I didn't do is to check the POS audio page in the handbook. I realized after that, that according to the handbook, although POS audio package comes with a service file, which is not necessary in most setups, the POS audio maintainers discourage using a system-wide setup. So it was not only installed, but configured as intended at the time. Pipewire installation is not going to help in this situation. In the end, with some blind lucks, I decided not to bother with Pipewire and checking ELSA. It fixed the sound issue immediately. Next, I started to tinker with Bluetooth. I remember the package named BlueZ in ArchWiki a long time ago, so I installed it and restarted the system. 
the system won't boot into the graphical interface after. I realized there's something wrong with the Blue Z, so I removed it in the TTY console and put it back into the XFCE and checked the handbook again. I saw that not only do I need to create a symbolic link for the service file called Bluetooth D, I also need to add the user to the Bluetooth group in order to make it work. And finally, Bluetooth is working and can be used to connect to my headphones. Another minor issue is the NTFS USB drive support. I installed the NTFS 3G package to fix it. Next, I realized all the Chinese fonts are not displaying properly, so I started to check the system settings. The Chinese characters are not showing up properly in the settings menu either. Adding them there to the system did not fix anything. So I simply went to the Arch Wiki and searched the Chinese files package in the void package page and installed the available ones all is well after the reboot. Finally, the date and time issue. NTP is not installed by default in void, which caused me some SSL certificate signature issue when updating the packages using XBPS. The browsers are also having issue when trying to browse the internet with the wrong time. In order to fix this, I changed the mirror addresses to HTTP instead of HTTPS, which bypassed the SSL verification. I installed the NTP package after that and used it to set the date and time automatically to finally fix everything. There are also some applications issue for my use case. There's no Brave browser in the official repo and I didn't try to set up Snap in Void, so I decided to use App Image this time. It works pretty well. Only issue is that I need to start it from Terminal and left it open. In order to use the latest version of Sublime Text, I downloaded the pre-compiled binary toggle from Sublime's website, which works pretty well for the past three weeks. I mentioned in the beginning that Void Linux has many similarities with Solus but there are some differences as well. Despite the most obvious one that Void does not have an inbuilt desktop environment budgie, Void also does not have systemd. I have no issue without it for my daily usage, but unfortunately, I have to use it for OpenVPN to work. It is required to solve the DNS with Network Manager by using an update script made by the community. I do know there is a script called OpenVPN Update Resolve Conf made by this guy, Alfred. I tried it, but still not working. In order to protect my company's business, I won't reveal which websites I tried to access here. You just have to believe me that it is not working. I have found no alternatives on how to solve the DNS update script without systemd for OpenVPN. I ended up creating a virtual machine for work. Thank God I have an AMD CPU with enough cores. There is another weird issue after installing NVIDIA. Because my work requires me to use Google services, I need to use WildGuard to reach those websites in China. And in XFCE, I found out after starting the connection in Network Manager using NMCRI, I can't start any graphical applications. There is a conflict protocol error in the terminal. I did some research online, but couldn't find any suitable answers. So if you know how to solve this, please leave a comment below. I'm curious to know how to solve it. I was wondering, would it be helpful if NVIDIA is not running? So I installed the KDE desktop environment and logged into the VLAN session, and this issue disappeared. I also tried the X11 session of KDE and like XFCE, same issue occurred when running WildGuard. Finally, I tested Lutris in Void Linux. I was able to install Lutris without any issue, but it kept saying that I have no Vulkan drivers. After searching in handbook, I found two articles on how to install it for AMD and Intel GPU, but did not find any on how to install it for Nvidia. So I decided to ignore this message and install Ubisoft Connect. This time, Lutris reminded me that I do not have Wine. So I used XBPS to install Wine into my system and then finished the installation. This is the furthest I could go on Void because Ubisoft 
just won't start from Lutris after the installation. First, I thought it was probably because I have WildGuard connected in the X11 session. So I turned the VPN off and tried again, but still nothing. I also installed the Vulkan drivers for the AMD GPU and tried. Nothing either. Tinkering Linux is definitely addictive. After using some well-packaged distribution for some time, I kind of lost touch with this feeling. And after tinkering with Solus lately, I realized the urge is coming back. And Void Linux was the one finally scratched my itchness. It is a solid distribution with a lot of hidden fun inside. So if you have the time to enjoy Linux, I highly recommend this distribution for you. Just to be aware that there might be something tinkering needed in order to make it work. And that is everything for this video. Thank you for watching. I wish everyone a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And I will see you in the next year. Bye.